storage market has gotten exciting again recently with hard drives struggling to keep up with workloads and seeming slower and slower in desktop operating systems and getting bigger and bigger while SSDs have kind of spread out with high performance models like Optane and in this review here the low performance low cost inland SSD. This is a $65 480GB SSD which is on about as low as you can get for a new SSD. On the outside, the SSD and box are quite boring. The box just contains the drive with a plastic holder. There's no manual, nothing else inside it, no 3.5 inch adapter or USB at all. The drive itself is made out of a cheap feeling plastic with a sticker on both sides. It's a standard 2.5 inch drive without much really to say on it. Um, the box and the drive show the same things. It sequential speeds of 550 and 490 and then 70k read IOPS and 60k write IOPS. We're going to confirm that with our own testing using a few different programs to see what its actual performance is like. On the outside, the SSD and box are quite boring. The box just contains the drive with a plastic holder. There's no manual, nothing else inside it, no 3.5 inch adapter or USB at all. The drive itself is made out of a cheap feeling plastic with a stick on both sides. It's a standard 2.5 inch drive without much really to say on it. Um, the box and the drive show the same things. It sequential speeds of 550 and 490, and then 70k read IOPS and 60k write IOPS. We're going to confirm that with our own testing using a few different programs to see what its actual performance is like. Here's a look at the inside of the drive. This here is just a bare board, but inside of the actual 2.5 inch drive, we see it is quite small. Now, looking in the middle, we see the Fizon controller and the two NAND flash packages. On the other side, we see it's blank with two spots to put more um, flash packages. This is probably for either when you have older, smaller flash packages or when you want to do a 960 or 1 terabyte version. One more interesting thing that you notice on first glance is that it says 512 gigs, which is probably true. It's 512 gigabytes of flash. I'm almost certain these each are 256 gigabytes. Now, they over-provisioned it down to two. 480 gigabytes. See this is a Fizon A3111 controller. This is a basic two channel controller that's designed for low end SSDs. It's using other DRAM list SSDs like the Kingston A400 as well. Um, on their site it says it supports up to 550 read 500 write with 95 KIOPS read and 85 KIOPS write. Which is interesting that this drive is actually less than that. The flash package itself is pretty bare looking. I can't tell anything about this chip just doing some googling online. Now that we've taken a look at the drive, let's see how it performs in benchmarks. I'm going to use FIO and Linux for some more in-depth testing of different workloads, and then I'm going to just try running it as a boot drive in Windows and just see if it kind of holds up and feels snappy. This is the results of GNOME Disk Mark, so this is the built-in benchmark for GNOME Disks. Basically, it shows us we're getting 569 megabytes per second read and about 500 megs per second write, which is actually over spec. And for random access time, we're seeing 0.05 milliseconds. That's actually pretty good numbers. That's better than the spec. Let's see how FIO testing goes. Here's a look at my FIO benchmark suite that I created. On the left, we have an Intel S3500 that's 120 gigs. Then we have an 8 terabyte WD Red. Then we have a Micron 1100 2 terabyte, which is basically the same as an MX300. And then we have the inland SSD. Looking at sequential reads, we see all the SSDs do quite well and a good amount better than the hard drive. Sequential writes, the um, Micron does much better than everything else. The Intel drive doesn't have an SLC cache as it's an enterprise drive. The hard drive just does worse. And the inland SSD does worse, presumably because it's TLC and the buffer is struggling to keep up, as all the tests are ran in sequentials with no delay. The so next test is a um, 8K Q16 read-write test, and we see the inland SSD struggles compared to the other drives, presumably due to the lack of a buffer. And we see the other random tests do struggle more than the other SSDs, probably due to the smaller SLC buffer that's already been filled from previous tests, and the lack of a DRAM cache. Here's a read IOPS versus Q length. We notice as the Q length gets longer, the read IOPS go up, though it is slightly disappointing the um, very low Q depths read write performance. This is write IOPS versus Q length. We notice that the gain is a little bit less and it does quite a bit better at low Q depths writes, presumably due to that SLC caching.
This is the drive performance in IOPS versus the um, percentage of read and write with left being 100% read and right being 100% write. Um, we notice that it does the very best on both ends when it's either or and it does slightly better as we go towards the more right oriented side. One thing I noticed on this drive is performance would suddenly drop af off after a period of writing. I set up the drive to write about 450 megabytes per second and after about 20 seconds it fell to a down 100. We see this exact same pattern if we look at IOPS, going from about 60,000 write IOPS to about 15,000. This is due to the SLC buffer being filled up. Based on my estimates, the buffer is around 10 gigabytes. While this buffer looks like a huge drop off in these tests, in reality, most users aren't going to actually be writing this much data. And if you are, look towards a higher end drive, which does much better with this type of workload. Here is a look at the smart data of the drive on HD Tune. It's quite boring looking. The only disappointing thing to me is it doesn't show bad block count. I also did a quick test with the amount of write cycles. That number seems to be if you use decimals in gigabytes. Other than that, it's quite boring. It doesn't really tell you too much. And here's the real life performance. So I'm going to first do a restart on this system just to get an idea of the reboot times. And then we're going to just take a look at how fast some common applications open. Now, from my little bit of testing, it's definitely slower than a um, high-end SSD, but it's not bad. This is also a bit older of a system. It's an AMD FX8350 system I'm using here. But it's not what I consider to be awful. And I also ran a crystal disk mark run here. It's about and fine, slightly lower. The read and write speeds on crystal disk mark are worse than the rated ones. But all these mark disk benchmarks are a little bit off and slightly different. So there's the boot up time. It's really not bad. And if I, here's a program that probably we all use quite often, Google Chrome on a new setup. It definitely took a second, but now it's open. So now Google Chrome's open. It took a second. I've seen faster drives, but it's certainly not bad. Blender's relatively lightweight. And taking some time and now it's open for a fresh boot up that's not horrible if we look at like task manager for drive utilization and open like firefox where you can see it peaks for a second or two and then it goes back down and there's nothing really else to note updates are pretty fast on here it's a lot better than any hard drive you can kind of feel it's a bit slower than really high-end ssds but it's not bad in conclusion, it's a great value SSD. For 65 bucks, it's hard to say no to, especially if you don't already have one. It's a great drive for storing stuff like games on, where you want it a lot faster than a hard drive, and it definitely is much faster than a hard drive, but without much of the extra cost. And now let's go look at the downsides. So performance isn't stellar, but if you need the highest performance drive, you probably shouldn't be looking here here. The other thing I think is the smaller manufacturer and they're just possible issues. Because it's cheap, they probably cut corners somewhere. In my testing, I've had it randomly turn off after a couple hours in my desktop. I don't know why, I've been trying to replicate this on my laptop, I can't get it to, potentially it's an issue with that SATA controller. I don't know, I'll continue to look into it. Endurance, they might be using cheap NAND that won't last too long, I'll let you know if I have other issues with it. But right now, I don't really have anything to immediately say no with. This is overall a great entry-level SSD and a great drive if you want something that's faster than a hard drive without all the additional cost of a high-end SSD.